Good morning. Good morning. Well, it's wonderful to be with you guys on this slightly warmer day than this week we've been having. Today we continue our message of Christ back in preaching in his hometown of Nazareth. We left off last week where he was speaking of how the message has been fulfilled through him and coming, and now we have him taking that one step further. He tells us not only that he is the Messiah, but that he is coming not just for the righteous, but for the poor, for the sick, for every single person in this world. So, with that as our message, please rise as we join together in our worship of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us and forms us, who redeems us and calls us, who unites us and sends us. Gathered in God's presence, let us confess our sin. Mighty and loving God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We seek our own way. We divide the body of Christ. In your mercy, cleanse us and heal us. Let the words of our mouths, the thoughts of our hearts, and everything that we do be filled with faith, hope, and love. Amen. Hear the voice of Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to proclaim release to the captives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I proclaim to you that your sins are forgiven, and you are released. The joy of the Lord is your strength, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit are yours forever. Let us join together in our gathering hymn, O God of Light, on page 507.
Let us turn to page 147, the front of your cranberry hymnal. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. together our prayer of the day found on your celebrate insert almighty and ever living god increase in us the gifts of faith hope and love and that we might obtain what you promise make us love what you command through your son jesus christ our savior and lord amen please be seated for the readings First reading is from Jeremiah 1, verses 4 through 10. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. And then I said, Ah, oh Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy, for you shall go to all whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put his hand out and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint over you the nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull out, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The psalm is Psalm 71, verses 1 through 7. We'll read it responsibly. In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my great and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the clutches of the evil doer and the oppressor. From my mother's womb, you have, womb, been, you have my been my strength. strength. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. I've been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb, you have been my strength. My praise shall be always of you. From my mother's womb, you have been my strength. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 13. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, as so to remove the mountains, but I do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never ends, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the completion but when the complete comes, the partial will come to the end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now, we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. And of these three, the greatest is love. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the fourth chapter. Then Jesus began to say to all in the synagogue in Nazareth, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Now all spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, well, doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do he also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum? And he said, Now truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over the whole land. Yet, Elijah was sent to none of them, except to a widow of Seraphath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed, except Naaman the Syrian. Now when they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove them out of the town, and led them to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl them off the cliff. But he just passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The Gospel of the Lord. I invite you to be seated as we sing Jesus Loves Me for the children to come forward. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, 
They are weak, but he is. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How are you guys doing today? Good. Awesome. Now, that story that Pastor Constanza just read for us had a lot going on in there, didn't it? Yeah. So together, we're going to dive into our handy spark Bible. Who's seen one of these? Who uses these for Sunday school? Yeah? Awesome. Perfect. So we're going to join in this together. And as we go through it, we're going to kind of see how it applies to each and every single one of you. How does that sound? All right. It's called Jesus Goes to Nazareth. Can you guys say that? Can you say Nazareth? Nazareth. Nazareth. Do you guys know what Nazareth is? So that's Jesus's hometown. Do you guys know what hometown means? Okay, let me give you a hint. What's your hometown? The Madison Bulldogs. That's right. So we've got our hometown established. Your hometown is the Madison Bulldogs. Okay. All right. So Jesus is going to his home town of Nazareth. Let's try that one more time. Nazareth. Nazareth. Okay. Madison, Nazareth. Perfect. Jesus went to synagogues, holy places. So Jesus went to places like this. This would be like a synagogue, a church, where people worship to teach people about God. So like you guys come to Trinity here to learn about God. He went to synagogues all over, even in his hometown. What was his hometown again? (laughs) <laughs> yes, Nazareth, yes. <laughs> Jesus told the people, I was sent to tell you that God loves you. Did you guys know that? Did you know that God loves you? Yes. So he came to tell them that. But he also loves poor people and sick people and people in prison and people from other towns. So he came to his hometown. What's your hometown again? The Madison Bulldogs. Okay, so Jesus loves the Madison Bulldogs, like we see here with this sweatshirt. But he's also now telling them that he likes the Webster Bearcats. He also likes the Webster Bearcats and the Augustana Vikings and the Old Ham Ramona Rutland Raiders. He's saying he loves all of these different people. Now let's see how the people reacted to that. But the people didn't believe Jesus' words. Why are you talking about sick people and poor people and people in prison and people from other places? What do their faces look like here? They look pretty upset, don't they? They didn't like that Jesus liked people that weren't bulldogs, that he liked people from other places, poor people and sick people too. So let's see what they did. Everyone knows that God doesn't care about those people. I am here, Jesus says instead, I am here to show you that God's way is love for all people. The people began to grumble. Their grumbling grew to shouting. Do you guys see them shouting a little bit there? Yes, yes, I'll show you guys here too. And they said, go away, Jesus. And Jesus went away from there, but he kept on telling people, and showing people about God's love. So how did the people react when Jesus said, I don't just love you, I love all of these other people? What did he say? They, they were mad about it. They did not want that. They wanted him to just like the Madison Bulldogs. But Jesus has enough love for all people. So we need to remember that too. And we have people that we don't like Maybe it's in school. Maybe it's sometimes we get mad at our siblings or we get mad at somebody around us. We have to remember that Jesus has enough love for all people. Now remind me again, where's Jesus' hometown? Nazareth. Awesome. All right, let's join in a word of prayer together. We're going to do a call and repeat prayer. So when I say something, I need you guys to say it back as loud as you can, okay? Ready? Ready? Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. We thank you so much. 
for your love. That's for me and my siblings and my parents and for people I sometimes don't like. Thank you for your love. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys. You can head back to your seats. Friends in Christ, grace and peace to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So here we are continuing the passage that we started last week of Jesus returning back to his hometown and we'll hear how this reception is as he keeps on preaching. But I'd like to just have us look at a little bit of a wider context as where did Jesus come from and how did he even end up, what brought him back to his hometown and where has he been before? Well, chapter 4, which we're in, we're in the heart of chapter 4. In chapter 4, the first verses are talking about Jesus' temptation. The Holy Spirit, after Jesus' baptism, just takes him up and takes him to the wilderness. And there he is, finds himself wrestling with the devil. And the devil is quizzing him. It's kind of like intense Sunday school 101. They're having this Bible bowl. One knows the Bible verse and the other throws it back. And they're going back and forth about this. And finally, the devil releases him, and um, Jesus is now filled with the power of the Holy Spirit to continue to grow in him and work in him. And he goes right straight to Galilee from the wilderness. And so in the wilderness, um, he met the devil. The Holy Spirit led him through it. He strengthened his faith. And in Galilee, he does what he does best because he has started that ministry already when he was 12 years old. He goes to the synagogue, right? He... We remember him teaching in the temple when he was 12 and now he's about 30 years old and he goes right straight into the worship spaces of the towns that he enters and he starts to preach and teach and participate in worship in their synagogues. And as he talks to the people and interacts with them and lays out the word of God to them, the people are feeling this excitement there is something new in the air something is coming to town just like when you had Lexi lead worship right I could feel it who <laughs> there's someone without an accent I get it I know you guys it's okay I sometimes would just like to take it and put it to the side but I can't and so there's this excitement about something new is in the air something new is about to happen he does this so differently than than the, the laying out of scripture that we're used to. And they're talking, right? They're like you guys. They're going to go out into the community and they're going to go and sit with people over coffee. I don't know if they drank coffee then, but they're going to go sit with people in their homes and in their meeting places and they say, you know, we had this Jesus guy come to town and he just did this new thing. I, I just can't put a word to it. But he's very exciting. And he stirs something in us. And he lays out the scriptures in a new way that, that we have never encountered. And so the word, of course, spreads. Uh, they didn't need tweets or any of that. They just need a word to mouth and it just kind of spread out. Like one ripple started a big wave in this big ocean of communication. And eventually, and this is where we landed last week, eventually Jesus goes back to Nazareth. That's his hometown, right? He goes back to Nazareth. And he does what you do right now. He comes to worship. Right? You visit your relatives. Jesus' relatives were living in Nazareth yet. And so that's what they do. On Sunday mornings, they just go to the synagogue and they worship. Well, they don't do that Sunday morning, but that's what you do. And so as he enters, he sits down. And he is asked to be the lector of the day, to read the lessons, just like Maggie did earlier. And I'm sure Maggie didn't pick the scripture passages because they were assigned and they were given to her to read. And so he unrolls what he is handed and he starts reading. And that's the passage from Isaiah that we heard last week. And when he's done reading, he just rolls it back up, hands it back, sits back in his spot, just like Maggie does, 
But now instead of all looking at me, everybody's going to start looking at Maggie because... Man, we have heard all the stuff about you, Jesus. We need to know what this is all about. What are you going to do with this? Right? What are you going to do? It's this high air of anticipation and expectation that's just kind of electrifying at that moment. And so there is this silence that just kind of eats up the whole entire space. But Jesus does a smart thing here. Instead of making it about himself, he draws the attention right back to the congregation that's gathered. And he says to them, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And that happens today. Today, in what you hear, it has nothing to do with what I say. See what he's doing here? It has absolutely nothing to do with what I just read. It has all to do with what you hear and want to hear. That scripture passage I just read can be fulfilled. But you need to hear. Now, he just built that excitement right back up. He drew them right back in. And they look at him again. And they're just waiting of what's going to happen. But now they start to talk because what he just said is really cool. And they remember another thing, right? They remember how Lexi just said that so eloquently, that he is what? That he wore what for the beginning? He wore the Nazareth, I don't know. What could they have been? I don't want to call them monkeys, but the first thing that came to my mind. The gorillas, right? He wore with pride the shirt of their school, and that was the Nazareth gorillas. You know how that goes with hometown heroes, right? We own them. They're ours. We made them. They are mine. And I got all rights to it, and now he has come home. And we want a slice of that pie. That's how that goes with hometown heroes. Just wait. You send one out, they come back, it rubs off on you. The only little claim of fame I have, I don't even care about. I, I don't favor football. Okay? Is that, aren't there Reeve brothers playing football? I think one place for the Vikings did, maybe, one point. Riley? There we go. That's my only claim to fame I have. Because his mom cut my hair when I lived in Parkson. <laughs> right? I own a piece of that man. I, his mom cut my hair. It's like holy hair now. Right? I bet there were people in that synagogue gathered together that morning that said, Man, aren't you the son of Joseph? You had me make a chair, and that chair is now going to be in a special spot. It has a red ribbon, and I'm going to charge an entry fee for people just looking at that chair that you made and I own because I now own a piece of you. Aren't you the son of Joseph, the carpenter's son? I know you. I made you. I built you. I walked with you when you were a squiggly toddler in the synagogue, and I put up with you. And now, the expectation is that you do for me right here what you do all over the place because you should be doing it here first of all. Right? Come on. Right. Because I have had those thoughts. Right? I have had those thoughts. But then, Jesus says, you know, we can Bible Bowl a little more because I just fought the devil. I just won the Super Bowl of Bible Bowl, he says, because I just had all this. And I know what you're going to quote to me because it's in Scripture. 
And I know the Bible. He says, now, doctor, do here, cure yourself. And then the expectation is that you do here what you do out there. Because that's what you owe us for making you who you are. Boy. Are they in for a surprise, aren't they? Yeah, just a little bit. Jesus says, I have some scripture for you. How about Elijah and Elisha? Huh? How about those two? Yep, Elijah lived in Israel. He was the only prophet left. And he could have done all those wonderful things, but that's not what God had in mind. God just brought him to one widow. Really, what's worth a widow? Nothing. Who cares? Let her and her son die. There's much more important people than a widow. But that's where he sent her, him, to care for her and her son, to give them life. And then, yeah, this uh, Naaman with leprosy. Who cares about a stranger? There's other lepers. There's lepers right amongst us. Who cares? I don't care about them. God did, and he sent Elisha to cure the leper, Naaman, from a different country, different culture, different context. How did that go over? Like a lead balloon, I would say. That's probably the better way of putting it. They didn't like it. They didn't like it one bit. And I don't think that that sermon would go over any better today if we would take a good hard look at ourselves. I don't like it. I don't like to share my kids sometimes. Well, sometimes I like to give them to you. Other times, I don't. I found sitting myself in the front row and watched uh, them do stuff, and I thought, yeah, I did a good job. And other times I sat there and thought, no, I don't know those kids. I was lucky one didn't have my last name. The other one, I guess I could push over to Dirk if I wanted to. Right? But Jesus does something. He cuts right through that anticipation and that expectation, this expectation that he is all theirs and theirs alone and theirs only, he cuts through that right with a sharp knife. Have you ever picked up a piece of fruit that just looked delicious? And you were maybe the first one in that buffet line? Oh boy, I'm the first one. This looks good. I'm going to just take it because it's mine. And then you come and go to the place where you're sitting and you start to cut into it and it's just rotten from the core. Yeah, that's how that goes. That's exactly what happens here. As we are all such neat little packages of people, Jesus says, yeah, well, that might look and work for you for the outside, but let me just cut right through the chase here. Uh, It's not working so well for you. Because in the inside, you just think you own me. And we all do. We all own a piece of Jesus. Right? At least I think I deserve him. I'm here almost, almost every Sunday. I pray pretty regularly for you. I even get up early for you so that I have enough time to pray for you. Don't I deserve some reward for that, Jesus? You do the same. You're here. You could prep your Super Bowl party, but you're here. Don't you deserve some sort of a pat on the back? And Jesus says, no. And you know why? He says, because that's not what I'm called to do. Yes, you get my love, my devotion, my care, my joy, my whatever it is that I have to offer, but you don't own me. You know how he knows that? Because he knows that Mary has a song. And that wasn't even her own song. That wasn't her own song. I told you earlier that that song was Hannah's song first. And then when Hannah sang it throughout the ages, it was given to Mary. And as Mary sang the song in the presence of Elizabeth, it became her own song. And as she held baby Jesus, uh, there is no reference in Scripture. I truly make this up. And you can trust me or not. That's up to you. But I truly believe 
that she sang that song to Jesus. How many of your mothers sing to their kids? I sing. I still sing to my boys. They haven't asked me yet to quit. It's hard to sing on messenger, really. But it works. I, I am convinced that Mary sang that song to Jesus as he grew up. As she held him and as he grew up into the person that God called him to be. And now, Jesus says, this is my song. This is my song. I am. In your hearing, you can believe it or you can leave it. I am what the scripture says I am. And I am here for all people. Not just a select few. Not just the Lutherans. Ooh. Not any other denomination either. But for all people, whether they have a denomination or not, whether they have faith or none, I am here. It outrages them. It does. It outrages me sometimes. It's just like Lexi said to the kids. Sometimes I just don't want that love to go to other people because I want it first. But in our rage, as we try to hurl Jesus off the cliff, Jesus does this miraculous thing. He just went on his way. This going on his way only shows up a couple, well, four times, I think. It shows up here. It shows up when he has his eyes fixed on Jerusalem. And it shows up when he goes to the cross. And it shows up when he goes on his way after the resurrection. Jesus has a focus. And actually, truth to be told, the focus is you. And all people. Because as much as he lays out our sin and cuts right through the core, he also knows that that's necessary. Because as he goes on his way, he goes on his way with our salvation in mind. He knows we're sinners and we cannot solve our self. And that what we need is him being on the way to offer us salvation not just one day but each and every day and so our call is to let Jesus go on his way and to go with him to bring the good news of Christ's amazing grace to all the world amen I invite you to stand and sing with me number 676 <laughs>
please be seated. Today for our milestone, we recognize for our 11th graders a milestone where we'll have um, a conversation about vocation and God's call and where it meets these 11th graders as they're making a lot of big decisions heading into thinking about what they might want to do for a living, what schools they're going to, and all of that. So we'll unpack that together here. At 10.15, we'll have that milestone in the fireside room. So we'll start a little bit later. Feel free to get some breakfast downstairs with the Boy Scouts beforehand and meet us there. As I read the 11th grader's name, feel free to come forward with your family if you would like. You can grab a prayer stone from the baptism fount, and we'll talk about that in our education moment, about what we're going to do with that and what that means. Amanda Benson, Haley Delzer, Kelsey Gustaf, Caden Kruzmark, Sawyer Miller, Sam Suter, Braden Bjorklin, Lizzie Ellingson, Morgan Hansen, McKenna Krieger, Everett Moore, Madison Townsend, Cody Brown, Andrew Ersland, Marissa Kieran, Benjamin Lester, and Keaton Nybert. Those prayer pebbles are your foundation for your um, learning experience with Lexi this morning, so keep them close at hand. We do have replacements, but just saying, this is your own now. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we know that you call us. You call us continuously to journey with you, and especially those juniors as they wrestle where you call them to go as they discern their future, we ask that you stir in their hearts and in their lives to find direction through you, not their own will, but through the gift of your Holy Spirit. May their parents be an accompanying guide on this journey, and so we call in Christ's name, amen. You may be seated as we will share the prayers of intercession. Please rise. United as one body in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. We pray for the church. Inspire us by your spirit as we respond to your call. When we are reluctant, strengthen us. When we are doubtful, encourage us. Above all, let your love shine through us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the earth, for mountains and prairies, cities and farms, rainforests and deserts, awaken us to the mystery and diversity of your creation. Nurture all living things and protect your creation from harm. Lord, in your mercy. For the nations, kindle within us a spirit of respect for one another. Protect those fleeing their homes to escape danger or oppression. Bring peace to communities torn apart by warfare and violence. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those in need, protect those who suffer abuse, and encourage those who lack hope. Guide all who provide medical care, comfort those who grieve, and bring healing to the sick. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For this assembly, bless our children and our elders. Gather us into a community guided by your love. Inspire in us a spirit of hospitality and kindness. Teach us to bear one another's burdens with compassion. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayers and fill us with the radiance of your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. God's people share God's peace.
Through chairing the piece, I invite you to be seated to ready your hands and hearts uh, for the offering as we're accompanied by the women's choir here at Trinity. for the offertory.
creation. All you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts, that we may be for the world signs of your gracious presence. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. The same after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is my blood shed for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us now pray how Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come, everything is prepared. I invite the um, acolytes and the communion assistants to come first.
The God of glory dwell in you richly, name you beloved, and shine brightly on your path. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be with and upon and remain with you always. Amen. All right, for announcements that we've got today, if you guys ordered a take and bake pizza for your Super Bowl party, please make sure you pick that up. It'll be downstairs in the narthex. The youth have them ready to hand out to you, so go ahead and grab that there before you head out. There's also the Boy Scout pancake feed downstairs that'll be happening until one, so make sure you stop down there and join them there. We also have, you might have noticed, over by the elevator on the wall there, there's some hearts over there and some signs that say, why do you love Trinity? So leading up into Valentine's Day, we'd love for you guys to share your reasons why you love Trinity. It's grab a little pink heart that's there, write your reason, and then tape it on the wall there, and we'll watch that continue to grow as we lead up towards Valentine's Day. Any other? Um, take, we talk about Valentine's Supper. Oh, yep, we'll have that in a moment. We'll have yep. that in a moment. And uh, the Super Bowl, if you, S-O-U-P-E-R, benefiting the Lake County Food Pantry, you can vote for your favorite team. Well, we don't have everyone's tub down there, just the ones who play. So you can predict who wins, all benefits and proceeds will go to the Lake County Food Pantry. And some of you I have um, heard ask where Pastor Dirk is. Well, Pastor Dirk is at Trinity Lutheran in Arlington. And um, long story made short, we have um, engaged in some sort of services and partnership um, just by contracting basis with Grace Episcopal here in town. Um, so if they ever need help, for their Sunday morning services, we'll be able to be there. Thanks for Alexi being on staff. She, um, on our way to ordained ministry, this is what life is gonna be like, so. Um, and then we also contract out, at least for the month of February for now, with uh, Trinity Lutheran in Arlington. And so Pastor Dirk went up there. You'll always have two of us here and one of us for the month of February go out. And all of, the, all of the earnings, incomes, whatever that will be, will be benefiting your general fund, our general fund here at Trinity, which will help, of course, with some of the expenses that come with personnel that we, may, that we do realize. And we want to be uh, proactive on that end and offer what we can do um, to help. And so our gift is to do what we do and what we were trained to do. And so that's our part of giving back um, to Trinity's general fund and your graciousness. So there are some changes that you will see as we go on moving into this new phase of sharing sources and resources, but I hope you feel um, comfortable enough to express if there are any challenges that you experience that you're not comfortable with, or if you just have a word of support and say, thank you for sharing and going out and being the word of God in other places. We, we love to hear from you and your council members will also. That leads me to the council members. If you are a new council member and uh, are ready for your new council member orientation, we'll be meeting in the office conference room. All other spaces are really occupied, so that's the only space we have available, and that's a good space for us to meet. So that's all I have. Wonderful. I'll invite Ben to come up. There we go. Good morning. I'm up here on behalf of the high schoolers going on the Colorado trip to Sky Ranch this summer. And uh, this is about the Valentine dinner. So thanks to all those that who, are, who already have uh, bought their tickets and those that are going to buy them this morning. And the menu for that includes Tuscan blend vegetables, breadsticks, a garden salad, dessert, and the option of sausage and chicken rigatoni or Alfredo cheese tortellini with sauteed vegetables. Uh, the food, the single ticket prices are $20 a person, or the, what's new this year is we are doing a family th thing for a family of three or more, and it's $15 per ticket for the family price. And the, today is the last day to buy their tickets, and the meal will be on February 10th. Thanks again, and thank you for all those who bought pizzas. That's really, we are really grateful for that, so thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Ben. Yes, yeah, so make sure you stop and get your tickets down in the Northex. Last day to get those. We're excited to join you guys next week for that. 
And with that, let us join together at our sending hymn. Let's stand and join in. I love to tell the story on page 661.